Hello and welcome to Design Education Talks by the New Art School. Our guest today is Eloise Tarak. Welcome, Eloise. Hi. Hello, fantastic to have you here. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, that's wonderful, wonderful. So tell us about you and your work. So I am currently a course leader of um, the BA Graphic Design at Brighton University um, and a senior lecturer. And I have worked for about 17 years in some form or other of, of uh, graphic design and art education, um, mostly alongside graphic design practice as well. Um, and prior to my role at, at Brighton, which I only started um, this uh, previous September, I worked at Winchester School of Art, um, which is part of the University of Southampton on the BA Graphic Arts course. Um, and I also um, worked for quite some time in further education as well. So sort of teaching 16 to, uh, well, actually 16 to sort of adults um, and beyond um, in, again, in graphic design, typography, printmaking um, areas of education. Fantastic. So, uh... What is the work you're doing now? So um, in, my, in my own work, so I have a research contract mm. with uh, Brighton, which is really exciting. So it's the first time I have been able to kind of combine um, my own areas of interest really um, fully alongside education as well. And um, so uh, in 2017, I had the opportunity to study at the expert class type design at the Plantan Institute in Antwerp, which was absolutely amazing experience under Dr. Frank Blockland. Um, and so I worked with a group of really interesting people from all around the world. And we, we had to study um, a, a kind of group project where we studied a revival type based on the archives of uh, the Planta Maritas Museum, which is this incredible UNESCO um, heritage site. And uh, also I undertook some personal research as well. So I'm currently working on a group project with two of, of um, my group members, um, Maritz Kleinsorger and Ellie Castellanos. Um, and together we're kind of taking um, some of the research we did as a group along with Alvaro Franca and uh, Krasen Krestev. Um, us three are kind of moving the type design on um, and we're hoping to be able to publish our typeface um, hopefully uh, towards the next um, a type eye uh, conference which will yeah. take place in person so mm -hmm. um, that's what we're heading towards <laughs> at the moment so um, and it's it's a revival of uh, Hendrik van der Kira small picker uh, wow. Roman um, mm. so that was that was really interesting um project to do and we're kind of looking at um display type versus uh text type and the kind of technologies of the renaissance era versus the technology of now um and i'm i'm also doing something similar i'm looking at um italics by Grandjean, um sort of the four key stages of his italics and kind of trying to process them through using variable type as a tool to kind of observe and, and research. So, um, and it's, it's a bit tricky at the moment. Um, the Pantan Maritas Museum have archived a huge amount of um, images of their collection, especially during the pandemic, which has been amazing. But one of the, the brilliant things about the course is actually being able to go and use the museum itself. So yeah, I'm missing that at the moment. We've managed to get to Belgium, I think, once in the last mm. two years. So, um, and and I'm also um, undertaking some uh, more practice-based work, I guess, um, looking at the Belgian coast. So, I'm really interested in type design and typography. Um, but the other sort of area I, I really um, enjoy is photography and um, architecture. <laughs> so, I'm looking at. Um, the Belgian coast, which is this really interesting 60 kilometers, I think it's about 60 kilometers of coastline, uh, which is very heavily used and full of these kind of line of high rise um, buildings, flats that just face out to sea. Um, and there's loads of really interesting vernacular typography. So there's most, most people kind of name their, their apartments or their houses. Um, there's this real kind of um, embracing of leisure and the idea of taking a break and going to a different place to kind of really enjoy, um, I, yeah, holidays and vacation with family. So 
you've got all these kind of um, idealistic names of buildings and um, really, really interesting um, sort of individual letter forms that have been used. So, so that's another that's another project I'm doing at the moment. That's that's very very interesting. So, are you working on the micro differences uh, of the typeface as well, like sort of of creating micro differences? Yes. So, so um, I guess. Yeah, the micro is really the Renaissance research yeah. um, and um, really looking at, uh, yeah, the, the the kind of detail of um, how these letter forms were created by the punch cutters, Yeah, um, you know, and bringing up quite surprising results. So I, I gave a lecture with uh, Eli Castellanos um, at the 2018 Ataipai, which is, I'll, mm. I'll give you the link for that as well. That's on yes, uh, YouTube. Um where we where we talked about our findings, so um, we were looking at kind of different optical sizes, um, and yeah, they just threw up some really um, interesting responses. When we started, we, basically, we all um, studied the same material, five of us, in detail. Um, and the really interesting thing about the course was that we all had completely different backgrounds in terms of our experience with type design. So, mm -hmm. some people. Um, I think two members had worked for Dalton Marg, um, so they'd gone through the kind of pro the really interesting sort of training process um, that you do when you're at that company. Um, and then other people were in education or uh, had gone through things like the cast cask type media. I know a lot of people um, study at Reading as well, and then go on to do the course. So um, everybody kind of brought their own viewpoint to it, and it was really really interesting uh, when we all interpreted the material. We were looking at the matrices, the metal matrices and the punches, you know, which are absolutely tiny. Yes. Um, and and the difference in people's interpretations, even though you're looking at exactly the same material, was just really staggering. Um, so that that was something that was really useful. And I learned loads from that. So um, Frank Blockland does a really great lecture during the course where he talks about um, how you can kind of only... Uh, I'm paraphrasing here, but um, so you can only kind of really see what you already know in some ways. It's very hard to look at something completely objectively. You're always um, shaped by your past experiences and understanding. So um, the really beneficial thing, I think, from that course for me and the whole experience of doing this group project was really learning from others and also understanding what you can bring to a project as well, whatever your background so, um, and I guess that's something that um, I try and embrace um, in my own teaching and my education role as well. Um, I mean, I've, I've uh, done lots of courses myself. I really love to learn more about typography and letter forms. Um, there's something really interesting about uh, education that involves typography, I think. Maybe it's because of language and you're actually dealing with the, the tools of language. Um, but yeah, I think it's really important to um, recognise what different experiences and backgrounds can bring, you know, and, and try and get students to appreciate um, that they're bringing something to the table, even if they feel, you know, they're not as experienced or knowledgeable as other people. Absolutely. So how did you get into teaching? So um, I actually, I, I didn't want to get into teaching. Um, lots of people in my family are in education or have been in education in one form or another. And it was something I didn't ever really imagine I would end up in. Um, but I, I studied, I actually studied photography and graphic design. And then I went into um, illustration as, a, as an undergraduate course. Um, I guess because those are the two things I'm really interested in is is typo typographic elements of graphic design and photography and illustrations <laughs> probably naively at the time seemed to be a way to kind of embrace those two um and the course I did was not really a traditional illustration course I don't think I did any drawing at all <laughs> um, in the traditional sense um but that led me into um editorial design and um, creating, uh, trying to kind of create ind independent publications. Um, and I guess with illustration, um, you know, self-publishing is quite important and thinking about, um, you know, having a voice and uh, speaking to people through 
the the work that you're making. So um, after after that, I was looking for. Um, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I worked in a couple of um, design studios, and I actually had quite miserable experiences. Um, a lot of sexism. Um, I had a small child at the time, um, and it was very difficult for me to kind of fit into the working hours. Um, you know, and the kind of culture of um, graphic design studios, which I do think still exists in the UK anyway. Um, you know, there's a, still a lot of um, this idea of proactivity, you know, and working really long hours and, um, you know, not really being flexible. So um, an opportunity came up at the college that I studied at and um, as, a, as a technician, um, and it was for graphic design, um, printmaking. I also ended up um, dealing with a lot of clay. <laughs> um, and um, I, you know, from there I got opportunities to um, teach on uh, NHND um, and also A-levels. So um, that was really rewarding. And I did all of that alongside um, developing graphic design practice independently. So I worked with um, uh, a design partner called David Milhouse. Um, he um, works with a lot of type design. Um, and we worked together on a magazine um, called Glue Magazine. And we we just made a big effort alongside um, my working at the college to meet people, contact people. Um, so Slanted Magazine, Julia Carl and Lars Hampson, they were really supportive. Um, we traveled to um, conferences such as Colophon in Luxembourg and Facing Pages. Um, and really the good thing about working at the college was it gave me the stability and the kind of income to be able to, um, you know, go out and meet lots of people, make work that didn't have to make money um, and really kind of explore, um, you know, the, the elements that I was really interested in within kind of graphic design and publishing so um so that's how I got into teaching um and um and then I I worked there for quite some time um and then an opportunity came up at Winchester School of Art which I applied for um and uh yeah I worked within graphic design and uh, led the graphic design pathway so um that that was a really really great experience and I worked there for 10 years actually um so the, the job I have now is the first time I have worked full time in education and kind of committed, <laughs> committed to that. So, um, I mean, it's interesting because people sort of talk, people ask about your practice, um, but education is also a practice. Of and course. I think, you know, that's something I learned when I was at Winchester University, sorry, Winchester School of Art, which is part of um, Southampton University, because I had the opportunity to work with so many different people in different departments. Um, and we worked a lot on ideas of education and pedagogy. So, um, so that was really, really great, really beneficial, you know, just exploring ideas of, you know, assessment, which sounds quite boring to lots of people, but actually, you know, it can be really interesting. What, what's it for? Why does it exist? You know, um, what does it mean in the context of art and design? So, um, so yeah. And um, yeah, that's how I got into education. <laughs> mm, fantastic, fantastic. So how do you see uh, our education practice uh, translating as a career for, for uh, designers and illustrators? So I think um, it's really, at, at the moment, particularly in the UK, or well, particularly in England, um, we're in an interesting situation because um, there are a lot of issues with education, um, you know, right from the beginning. Um, and so I, I think that there's not that much respect for education as a job um, or a role. You know, there's there's this idea of the real world um, which exists outside of education. And I think for me, it's quite important that students are aware that everything is the real world, um, you know, and there are all sorts of opportunities Um that might be really interesting to take within education, um, research, the idea of being able to explore, you know, in, in relation to graphic design and typography, um, particularly, you know, um, language and, and meaning and the connections to things that are happening in the world. So 
Um, when I'm designing or planning projects, quite often I will um, have a focus on students connecting with subjects outside of graphic design um, and really thinking about their role as a citizen um, and things that, yeah, things that are happening in the world. And I think education is really important in that respect and working in education gives you the opportunity to really explore and embrace those, those things. So um, an example was when we had Brexit, you know, I worked with um, uh, people who were working in political education, who were working in linguistics and language, and we were able to really encourage students to have a voice um, and to talk about what was happening and to discuss different opinions. And I, I think um, that's what I would encourage, you know, students who are, who are not sold on the idea of um, going necessarily into a design studio or an agency, um, you know, to think about further study and, you know, going into some form of academia and research, you know, where not necessarily within an education institution, but, you know, also um, researching, you know, in general um, and making connections with people outside of their discipline. Mm. Um, I think that's really, really important. So, um, I mean, some of some quite a few of my ex-students, my graduates have gone into um, teaching as a career, P doing a PGCE, a postgraduate certificate of education um, at all levels. So, you know, some students want to go and work with small children. Um, I found working with 16 to 19 year olds particularly rewarding because um, you can really change somebody's experience of education. Mm. And, you know, for the first time, they're perhaps studying a subject that they've been able to just choose and they feel like they're getting somewhere with and perhaps it's a much more positive experience for them um so so yeah I don't know if I'd recommend people to go into uh, higher education <laughs> in uh in uh the UK at the moment but then on the other hand I think um uh, we need you know motivated interested people to kind of change things and also to um you know help um shape what's happening with graphic design I think that's really important as well um like the role of uh, education to allow people that space to kind of explore and discover new things particularly at like master's level and beyond as well fantastic so you're saying that all these challenges uh so if you had the magic wand and you could do anything there was no there was no limitations what would you do what would you change what would you um <laughs> Uh, well, first of all, I would um, probably change the, um, I'd change the uh, university's minister <laughs> um, immediately. So um, I think we're, you know, we're in a very challenging situation with our government at the moment. And, um, you know, this week, um, our, our current university's minister um, talked about uh students being customers or consumers um, and that they should be allowed to have refunds for um, being online during the pandemic. And I think that kind of really epitomizes the, the issue, um, this idea of student as a consumer, this kind of passive um, receptacle to receive knowledge and then to go out, um, you know, and be productive um, and, you know, become part of the kind of capitalist machine. <laughs> so um, the thing I would change is to, um, I, I would fully fund education. I think it's, I think it was great that um, students were encouraged to participate. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, criticism of uh, the Labour government, you know, New Labour, Tony Blair, trying to get 50% participate participation. And I think it's great. I think, you know, what a weird society that you don't want um, people to, you know, study and, and educate themselves. So um, that's what I would change. I would I would make it much more inclusive and accessible. And I think going back down actually before higher education, I think it would be really good that there was more funding and opportunities in further education because I went into study um when I'd had a gap, I had a gap between um, school and going back to college and being able to study. And I think that was only possible because there was funding there. And I think for a lot of people um, from different backgrounds, it's really good to be able to be encouraged to see what's possible 
um, to go into a higher education. So I think that's that's really important. Um, and the other thing that I would really like to see changing um, is, you know, um, to, to perhaps get rid of nostalgia for the past. I think, um, you know, particularly the idea of um, something having existed you know, in the past, the golden days of art school and graphic design. Um, I don't know if those, they may be existed for some people, but they definitely didn't exist for everybody. So I think um, sort of embracing different, um, different paths into education, but also really opening up inclusivity and encouraging um, people from different backgrounds um, that might not have considered um, going into university. I think that's really really important and particularly for graphic design because I think it is an echo chamber at the moment I think it's perhaps improving but I you know with the in the nicest possible way it's an echo chamber um and everybody at a certain level knows each other and everyone in education um at a certain level seems to know each other and I think um you know it's it's really important to get different voices and different experiences involved fantastic how how can our viewers and listeners find you? Um, so i i have uh, I have a website which doesn't have a huge amount of uh, information on there, but it has my um, contact details. Um, and also, um, as I mentioned, there there's a talk um, from a Taipei 2018, which I will send you the links for. Um, I do have. I have a, a Twitter account um, as well, which I, I shall give you a link to. All opinions are my own and not at all representative of uh, any of the universities or colleges I work for. <laughs> um, but yes, and, um, you know, I, I'd love to connect with people as well. It'd be great to hear from people. Absolutely, absolutely. What advice would you like to leave us with? Um, uh, I guess keep learning. Um, and expanding your horizons, um, seek out opposing ideas and challenge your assumptions of people and their experiences. And yeah, get out of the echo chamber. It's it's very hard. You know, I also find it hard to do. It, it's uh, it's nice to have your opinions kind of affirmed, <laughs> but it's also good to try and understand um, opposing ideas and opinions. I think not to agree with them, but to to really understand them. You know, and, and just think about. Um, you know we're all people we all exist um, together so I think the only way forward is to try and try and reach out and and put yourself in new situations um, you know where you're coming across people that have had different experiences from you you can learn from fantastic well Eloise thank you so much for, for, for being here it was, it was great having you oh thank you and keep in touch Yes. All the best. Bye.